Hello everyone, I'm Andy Carluccio, and today I'm going to show you how to use your Elgato Stream Deck to control your Zoom call. So let's get started. The um, Elgato Stream Deck is a uh, controller um, that has remappable buttons, uh, little screens on each key, and you can set an image on the key, and you can also set a function for that key. Now, out of the box, the Stream Deck has a lot of integrations and a uh, great user interface. However, a company called BitFocus has created a third-party integration for it that drastically expands the capabilities of the Stream Deck, and that's what we're going to be covering today. We've created a um, integration for Zoom OSC. Zoom OSC is a uh, modified version of the Zoom client that I created to give you more granular control of Zoom. Uh, the idea is that we expose uh, a lot of the um, the functions in a Zoom call to the OSC interface, and then the BitFocus companion will be able to talk to OSC. So I can show you a little bit about how we imagine that this would function. So in a general sense, what we're doing here is we are... Um, using Zoom OSC as sort of a receptacle for OSC commands. It also emits OSC commands, but we'll we'll share more information about that in a separate video. But the idea is that you can think about the, the Stream Deck sending commands to Zoom OSC, and then Zoom OSC will interpret those commands, and it will create an action in the Zoom meeting based on that. So we'll be able to use our Stream Deck to control a Zoom call, which is really helpful for events and live performance work. So the first thing you're going to want to do is download the BitFocus Companion program from BitFocus's website. Hit the download button, fill out the information, and then you will get an installer. And after you run the installer, you get the Companion executable. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to double click on this. And what it's going to do is it's going to launch the uh, Companion integration. Um, the Companion itself uh, integrates with the Stream Deck and it allows you to uh, deploy presets onto it. So once you run it, you will be prompted with a... Um, a, a window like this and you hit launch GUI to get to the interface. A couple quick things to note, you can set your network adapter and the port that it runs on here. Uh, I'm going to set it to the local host and port 8000 and I'm going to hit launch GUI. When you do that, you um, you summon the integration itself. This is the UI is in a web browser. And the next thing you want to do is download the integration for the BitFocus Companion from our website or this video's description. So then you head over to the import export tab and you import the preset that you got from our website. Um, and hit open and then replace current configuration and give it a moment. Great. Now we have the zoom OSC integration. You'll see if I hit edit, I can set the target IP address and port. The IP address is where the OSC commands are going to be sent to. And the port, uh, is always 8,000 for zoom OSC. Um, for, if you're running the companion and the, um, Zoom OSC program on the same computer. You can set this to localhost 127.0.0.1, which is the local software loopback. Um, if you are sending it to a different computer, you set the IP address of that computer there and then apply changes. Uh, one other quick thing I want to show you is the fact that there is an emulator for the BitFocus Companion. And inside of this emulator, you get all the functionality that you would get. So if you don't own a physical Stream Deck, you are able to use a browser and hitting these buttons will actually send um, the different commands uh, the OSC packets themselves. So super helpful to have that in case you don't have access to a Stream Deck, you'll still get this great nonlinear control service that you can run in browser. Anyhow, uh, back to the companion integration itself. If you go to the buttons tab, you will see that a bunch of different Zoom meeting functions are available now, uh, as well as some Zoom OSC specific programs. You will see that there are different um, presets that we've created. And if you click on one of these buttons, you'll see that you have the ability to set the OSC message. Um, all of the documentation about the different functions that are available are um, made available to you on our website. Uh, specifically, you're looking for the Zoom OSC 3.2 in this version API. And our API describes the different Zoom meeting functions like Spotlight, requesting somebody's video to turn on, muting someone's microphone, so on and so forth. You get the uh, the syntax is um, you know available here on this document, and you just make that match. So for the pin function, I want to do slash Zoom slash pin. And then the payloads um, can be integers or floats or strings if the string is a username. And I'll show you how to get all that set up. But for now, just know that once you have this preset running, uh, you want to verify that the buttons are available, double check the emulator or your Stream Deck itself and make sure that's working. You'll see as I page through the different pages that we have different preset functions. So here's a page for pinning different people, a page for spotlighting people. Here is a uh, video toggle. So if I hit this button, it sends a request to turn their video. Actually, if you're a co-host, it will turn off someone's video. And then if you hit it again, it will request that they turn their video back on. 
So you can see at a glance whose videos you've turned off, they turn red, and then you can request for them to come back. Same with audio. And then you have the Zoom OSC utility functions. And these are, I'll walk through some of these later, but this is how you get the program set up. And then I have uh, pin two, if you want to pin to the second display, if you run Zoom OSC in multi-monitor mode, which we recommend. So anyhow, your next step is going to be to download Zoom OSC. I'm going to use version 3.2 in this tutorial. When you download it, you get an installer. After you run the installer, you get a folder. And inside of that folder is zoomosc.exe. So go ahead and run that. Here we go. So this here is your Zoom OSC console window, which I'll refer to. And this here is your, um, your Zoom meeting window. So here you have a couple of login options. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and skip login and just hit only join. I already have a meeting in progress. So I'm going to hit only join, and then I'm going to type in my meeting number, which is, let's see, 929-436-15790. It's important that you don't put spaces in the meeting ID. I'm also going to choose the display name. I'll do Zoom OSC for now. And the meeting password is 390-467. Hit join. And on my host computer, I'm gonna let myself into the meeting. Great, so now I'm in a Zoom meeting with uh, four other virtual participants. And you'll see I'm running right now Zoom OSC in multi-monitor mode. So this is the, uh, the Zoom interface that you're used to. Um, under the settings page, the only thing that might look a little different to you is if I go to video settings, and I go to my general tab, you'll see that I have used dual monitors checked. What this does is it gives me one uh, view that is toggleable between speaker view and between gallery view. And then I have another window that's always the active speaker view. So when I run this app, what I do is I place the gallery view on one display and I place the active speaker view on a different display and I make them both full screen with a double click. Now, having done that, it's important to note that I have also made Zoom OSC a co-host of this meeting. So generally speaking, you create your meetings or you have your stage manager or the event manager or production manager create the meeting for your team. And then uh, when Zoom OSC joins the call, you ask to become a co-host so that you have access to features like spotlighting or turning someone's video off or requesting somebody to unmute themselves, so on and so forth. So I've definitely had that done. So I have uh, now have access to all of those functions. And so now on my stream deck, I have uh, a couple of things I need to do. So Zoom OSC needs to learn who is in this meeting. So I'm gonna go over to the utility functions page and there's a couple of different ways to do this. For now, I'm gonna hit the update button. And you'll see, if we look back at the Zoom OSC console, what happens is we've been uh, provided um, this information about our Zoom meeting. Uh, specifically, I care about this section of text here, which tells me the, um, the different control bindings for each of the participants. Now, Zoom OSC uses a zero index list which means that it starts counting at zero. So person zero is Jane, person one is Pat, person two is Liz, three is John, and four is Zoom OSC itself. Um, now in our control bindings, what I did is I, I started with a one indexed list. So when I hit pin one, it's actually associated with person zero. And we've already done the control bindings for you. So inside of the, um, inside of the BitFocus Companion app, if I look at the GUI, you'll see that pin one actually has a payload of 0, 0.0. So now what happens if I hit on the stream deck, the pin one button, you will see that on the gallery view screen, it is now switched to the active view with the pop out gallery view panel. And in the Zoom OSC console, it is now said that we are pinning a user um, from our list, specifically um, user number zero was pinned, Jane. So uh, this is great for being able to uh, select multiple people like a video switcher. So if I hit, you know, the different participants on my on my list, one, three, two, four, one, three, two, I can now switch through like a video switcher. And this is extremely powerful for um, operating as sort of a filmic workflow and a nonlinear workflow as well. So uh, now let's say though, I wanna go back to the gallery view. I'm gonna page over to the sort of utility functions page. I'm going to hit the gallery view button. And what that will do is it'll revert me back to gallery view on that input. So now uh, I can switch with just the speaker view and gallery view buttons between speaker view and gallery view just by hitting these two buttons, which is great when you're trying to get different content. Now, that being said, we are running 
um, zoom OSC in multi-monitor mode. So generally what I'll do is I'll leave this on gallery view and I will use the pin two functions. So now you'll see if I go over to the pin two page and I hit pin two on user three, now Liz is pinned on the second display and the gallery view is maintained on the other display. So if I ingest both of these into a media server, for example, I can combine them. But let's say I wanted to do a scene with, with you know, with, with, with two characters in it and I want them both, you know, to be at full, uh, at full scale, I could, uh, I could pin user one on the pin one function and now Jane is pinned on that monitor and Liz is pinned on the other monitor so I could combine them into a video feed and we've done that um, a bunch of times for different effects if they're in front of green screens you can put them in the same room you can do all sorts of really cool stuff with it um, but it's sort of up to you to figure out exactly you know what what type of um, utility you want to use this for so let's say now um, I want to go back to the gallery view on the first display I'm gonna leave it like that um, one sort of procedural thing is that you can hide self view. So if you don't want to see Zoom OSC's own video feed in the gallery view, you just have to um, right click and then hit hide self view and now it won't be in the gallery view anymore. And that's typically how we run it. We'll pass in a, a courtesy feed into the, um, the video input port and we'll hide self view so we don't recapture it. Uh, so you'll see a lot of information has been printing here. As I've been switching between gallery and active view, you'll see that it tells you which view we're on in the console. You'll see that as I call, if I call the update function again, you'll see our names print back out. But if you don't want to call update again, you can call list and you can see them listed there. So what, what is sort of the strategy behind all of this? Well, the, um, the update function looks at the zoom API and it, uh, grabs all the meeting participants and gives them a control number. Now, that being said, sometimes you'll want to have, um, persistent controls. If I just call, um, update as this course of the day changes, the order of the people and the control bindings will change, which isn't great when you're trying to do, um, you know, persistent bindings, you know, you want to, you always want to have, you know, pin one be, you know, um, a specific user. Uh, it's, it's not ideal to have, um, the, the control binding change over the course of the day. So what uh, what we do is we have a function under the utilities functions called save. And if I hit the save button, you'll see that it says it's saving the order to performanceconfig.txt. So if I open up the folder where Zoom OSC is installed, you'll see that I now have a txt file called performanceconfig.txt. And in here are the names of the users in the order that they appeared when I called the update function. So let's say now I wanna have John be Number one, I will just modify this text file, hit save, or control S as it were. So now if I call the load function, you'll see that the names in the uh, in the text file match the names in memory and the control bindings are persistent. So now if I go over and I go to pin two and I hit number one, John gets pinned to the second screen. And that is now consistent with the contents of performance config.txt. So just so long as you have persistent naming between the usernames of the participants in the Zoom call and the contents of memory, Zoom OSC will be able to control them. So if I hit video off on one, John's video feed turns off. And then if I hit it again, it opens up a request for John to turn video back on, which if John accepts that, the video feed comes back. So you put all this together and what you end up is really flexible control of Zoom through your Stream Deck. The idea is that you know all the functions that we expose to you through Zoom OSC are now available as buttons that you can press on the Stream Deck to be able to set different meeting actions like muting people, turning audio you know, on or off, being able to turn people's video feeds on or off, um, setting the spotlight, which is essentially a global pin, actually pinning people to a first display or to a second display or setting... Um, the controls of whether we're looking at gallery view on the primary display or speaker view on the primary display, all of the memory functions, you put all that together and you get really expansive control of Zoom uh, through Zoom OSC. So as you can see, the Stream Deck opens up a lot of options for nonlinear control of your Zoom meeting. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, please send us an email at info at liminalet.com and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. We also have a public Slack group for Zoom OSC power users and they're sharing presets and builds, so I definitely encourage you to check that out, uh, either via a link on our website or in the description of this video.